Uh, back uh, behind the monoculars this afternoon. It's good afternoon to Greg. Thank you, Brendan. Nice to be back, and they're uh, about to call them in for the first event here today. Lago's the favourite, fairly short at $2.80 on the tote, a little bit better odds available on track, but still the firm pick ahead of Ravens Pell number three. Armadramas has been a drifter, it's the third elect in the race, and then out to Devonshire and Naz Princess. So Lago favourite, didn't have much luck here at the 1400 last time out. Moving into the gates, Devonshire ready, Armadramas about to come up to the inside. Does uh, go up from a class six into this race today, has the claim for Matty Pumper. Overcast at the moment, but uh, it doesn't look like any rain's threatening. Just doesn't know how to at the moment, does it? Trek in good condition, rails out seven and a half. We'll just see how that plays. It often favours on-pace horses when it's out that far. 4.35, the penetrometer reading. Here's Largo now coming up into the gates. It's won two races at Werribee and at Geelong. And starts favourite in this open mare's company here today. But she uh, looks something beaten last time out behind Powder Burn. The 1600 should suit her. Going up there, Naz Princess, next to Gussie Godova. We need Raven's Pell to move in and Olivia's Dream, and we'll have them right to go in the first. Nakalawi handicap. She won a two-rack handicap here way back in 1977. Olivia's Dream is ready. Raven's Pell to take the outside barrier. See how she can carry her Mooney Valley form across to Caulfield. She goes in and they're set to run. Ready for the first. All clear comes through and they're away in racing. Largo a little bit slow to move. She settles at the end with Olivia's Dream. And in the early stages, Naz Princess has bounced out quickly and goes up and heads towards the lead with Devonshire settling second on the route and then Armour Dramas. Largo gets up on the fence to fourth and then Raven's Pal settling towards the end. Gussie Godiva and a length and a half, Olivia's Dream. No pace at the 1200. Naz Princess controlled it early. Leads by about three quarters of a length. Armour Dramas boots up to get closer. Devonshire's a length and a half away third, Largo on the fence and then Raven's Pell. She's found herself out three wide here and about a half a length away Gussie Godiva. Number half Gussie well Godiva to Olivia's, to Olivia's Dream. Dream. Coming down the side at the 1100 metre mark and it's Nass Princess but they're only cantering. About a half in front of Armour Dramas, two and a half Largo, a length in Devonshire, a half Gussie Godiva. A length in to Raven's Pell, one and a half Olivia's Dream. At the 800 metre mark on the side, Nass Princess, three quarters Armour Dramas, two to Largo, a half Devonshire, a length and a half Gussie Godiva. Three, three quarters, quarters running, running. Armadrama second. Largo follows the leader on the rail and then Devonshire. Gussie Godiva, Ravens Pell and Olivia's Dream last. Up to the turn, 500 to go. And he's released the threads a little on Naz Princess. She quickly put a length and a half on Armadrama's Largo. Gussie Godiva and the pink colours travel well but held up. And then Devonshire and Ravens Pell. Naz Princess for home from Armadrama's. Devonshire pulls out with Gussie Godiva and Largo the rail. Naz Princess in front at the 200. Plenty of chances for chasing her home. Gussie Godiva's coming home with Devonshire the outside. Naz Princess grabbed by Gussie Godiva in the middle. Largo getting through late. Gussie Godiva has the head clear though. Gussie Godiva wins it a neck to Largo, a nose to Naz Princess, and then Devonshire. Armour Dramas was next, followed in by Ravens Pell, and Olivia's dream last of all. It's Gussie Do Godiva collecting the cash. The Michelle Payne ride has come into paying $6.60, the former Kiwi Galloper, and prepared by Brian Mayfield Smith, whose uh, amazing strike rate at Caulfield continues. Minor end of the issue, though, very interesting with uh, the likes of Naz Princess. Uh, right in the thick of the action. So we'll wait all placings to be confirmed. Um, so no second and third through as yet. But Gussie Godiva collecting the cash. Michelle Payne for Brian Mayfield-Smith. Now New Zealand, it's Doyle, which firms in all of the time in betting. Uh, in Australia, Sursum Quarter is out to $6.70. This is one of the stakes race highlights. And we'll get those placings through from Caulfield as soon as they are available. Gussie Godiva winning, though. First race on the program, a last tycoon mare out of Sneech, and was a New Zealand winner back in April, having its second run back this preparation. It's four, five, six, and two. Four, five, six, and two across the line. A dollar ninety for Largo, and Naz Princess no third. Big run Largo, the runner-up, and first for New South Wales, twelve hundred and thirteen dollars and thirty cents. Let's go to New Zealand. Group fee. Here's the call. So they're all in the gates. Trentham Stakes ready to go. They're off. 
from the 2400 metres. Wolf Creek just a touch slow off the inside. Green Street and Sursum Quarter and Range Supreme have all begun quickly. As two saxophone just in behind the speed, Doyle going across for cover. Wolf Creek the inside and Baloney's the last one. So Green Street found the front as he likes to do and he comes past a pretty good crowd here at Trentham. First day of the carnival, a neat length in front of Range Supreme who's working up second. Wolf Creek is third on the inside and in the mare Sursum Quarter is the fourth a length and a half Doyle inside of saxophone and a couple of lengths, Baloney's the last one, and Green Street in front uh, likes to lead them end to end, and he puts a bit of a break on them here, galloping over towards the 1650 metres he's got four lengths on Wolf Creek and then we have the next is Rain Supreme, two to Sir Simcora and the next is Doyle back on the inside from Saxophone, she's second to last and Baloney biding his time tail end Charlie for Bruce Heard as they gallop up into the back of the track nearing towards the 1400 metres in the smoke free Trentham Stakes, and and it is Green Street the leader. Wolf Creek a clear second. Three lengths away, Rain Supreme. One and a half, Sursum Quarter. The next on the inside is Doyle for Michael Walker. Noel Harrison, saxophone second to last. And Baloney is still the last one. Well, he hasn't got away with the big lead here, Green Street. And he goes over towards the 1,000 metres. And leads still by one and a half lengths to Wolf Creek. Right on him. Still two or three lengths to Rain Supreme. And then Sursum Quarter the inside is Doyle from saxophone. And Baloney's the last one, Robert Hannam's dictating the tempo here on Green Street and he brings them down the side of the course in front, by two lengths again to Wolf Creek, Rain Supreme third, now Sir Simcorda is sent forward by Opie Bosson on the outside, Doyle getting the nice run just behind these as they come to the home corner then Saxophone and Baloney's the last one, it's Green Street coming up towards the home corner still a length in front of Wolf Creek going after him, Sir Simcorda the outsides coming out and after them they go for home and Wolf Creek goes up to Green Street and puts the head in front Wolf Creek now to Green Street who's fighting on, Sursum Court is trying to come out and after them with a good run and Doyle starting to let down as well Wolf Creek on the inside Green Street is fighting hard and now Sursum Court, she's starting to draw them in, here comes Sursum Court after Wolf Creek who's kicking great guns and he'll win, Wolf Creek's got it Wolf Creek grabbed the prize Sursum Court is second Green Street third and then we had saxophone Doyle Rain Supreme and Baloney. Well, the Andrew Calder ride proves a bit too strong in the run to the line for Sursum Quarter in the well-known Sir Patrick Hogan colours. So $14.90, $3.10, $2.40 Sursum Quarter and Green Street in third position, seven eight two. To the cheers of the winning team. Now at Caulfield, uh, they have returned to the enclosure. Michelle Payne for Brian Mayfield-Smith. Four, five, six across the line. And first four, four, five, six and two, $1,213.30. And they've run one thirty-eight seventy-three. Big day of racing at Royal Randwick this afternoon. The William English Classic for graduates of last year's English Classic sale. Ratings on the first. And they look this way with Strasbourg and Grisham equal top rating ahead of Networks. And from there we go to Hover. So one and five equal from two and number six. Check of betting opening race on the program. We're chosen destiny at longer odds. Has winkers on this afternoon. And shortly the runners will be parading at Randwick. Now New Zealand. Here's the details for you. Wolf Creek from Sursum Quarter and Green Street. And full details are listed for you on screen on seven, eight and two. You're watching Sky's English Classic Day coverage. Plenty more ahead. Back with you very soon. The betting duel between the top two continues to be enthralling with Strasbourg firming in and networks uh, likewise so but when you look at the different prices super tab strasbourg well and truly in the red networks uh, is in the black and grisham uh, is pretty much unchanged in betting across uh, the country and the six comes in for a bit of support at longer odds chosen destiny is the rank outsider so strasbourg holding sway ahead of networks after this race on the card will be heading off to victoria park for their first then back to caulfield for their second race on the card in the meantime this is Randwick's first race on English Classic Day. You'll call a good afternoon to Ian Craig. Good afternoon, Brendan. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Randwick, a very warm day in Sydney. 
at 11 o'clock it was 30 degrees here at Randwick it would be hotter than that now and in the western uh, sector of Sydney around Richmond at 11 it was 40 degrees uh, the heat has definitely uh, had an effect on the crowd here at Randwick it is very small at the moment and uh, the first of the day eight races of course a field of five going around and Strasbourg looking for the hat trick is uh, currently two dollars and a dollar on tab limited 280 for number two that's networks 190 the place and number five Grisham is 440 and two dollars hover at 12 and 33 for the rank outsider chosen destiny Strasbourg has raced uh, with blinkers at his last two starts with happy results on both occasions a win here over the distance of today's race and prior to that at Canterbury and uh, stepping up a fraction in class today and certainly stepping up in weights from 54 and a half at his last appearance to 57 and uh, Bart Cummings has a good opinion of Strasbourg who's part owned by Arnold House. Arnold is a an umbrella manufacturer and of course things are certainly on the on the slow side there at the moment plenty of stock that rain will ultimately come I'm sure in uh, hopefully the not too distant future and uh, he gets such a thrill out of his racehorses Arnold and certainly to no end with this bloke Strasbourg I saw him earlier in the day and uh, he seemed to have that ring of confidence anyway we'll shortly know as they're about to be positioned coming up to line is Grisham trained by Gay Waterhouse who on paper looks to have a very very strong hand throughout the day in goes the favorite only two to move up now and networks the second pick and the rank outside a chosen destiny so it's 210 number one 270 number two and 430 for number five networks a little bit cantankerous there's only his toes going around at the barrier he ran a good race at his first run back from a long spell at Rose Hill on the 28th of December behind spinning con that was his first start and only his uh, second race appearance his debut was on the 20th of Jan last year anyway he's in chosen destiny is set and uh, a start is imminent in the first of eight races. They're off. And the hover was first to leave, commencing well Grisham and chosen destiny. The rank outside is going up swiftly. Network second last and two and a half length Strasbourg. Working to the back over the crossing at the 1600. And Bernie Cooper goes to the lead on the rank outside of chosen destiny. Opens up about a length and three quarters on hover. A length away third is Grisham. Just over one then to Networks and about three further off Strasbourg. 1300 out down the back of the Randwick race course and chosen destiny leads the way. Hover second. Third is Grisham. Fourth networks a horse off the fence and two and a half to Strasbourg. Inside the 1200 they race now going on towards the next corner and Chosen Destiny shows the way. Hover second. Grisham third and second last is networks and Strasbourg another two lengths off and he'd be about seven or eight from the leader Chosen Destiny. And as they come onto the side now and pass the 900 marker Chosen Destiny leads the only filly in the small field. Hover by about a length and a quarter. Two lengths to Grisham. Three quarters to networks and two to the quietly ridden Strasbourg as they come down past the 700 marker still no change in the order and chosen destiny at the 600 pole by a length and a half on a hover Grisham called upon ditto ditto for networks and Strasbourg another two lengths away and Beasley is probably going to get onto the back of networks now as they come around the home corner yep and as they straighten up now hover got past the roughy chosen destiny Grisham racing up to hover length and a half after networks and now Strasbourg is starting to put in the long strides they reach the 200 marker now Strasbourg is sprinting very quickly he looks as though he's got them in his sights and he's raced to the front networks is going with him now though Strasbourg networks Strasbourg and networks reach the line Strasbourg I reckon a nostril networks in a bobbing finish then came Grisham followed home by Hover and last to complete the course the rank outside a chosen destiny photo called for in the first of the day. Strasbourg number one he looked as though he was going to uh, put paid to his rivals and win it and win it very very comfortably but network stuck to his guns on the inside Strasbourg had an inclination to uh, 
hang in a little bit over the last 50 metres and the two of them were in a head bobbing drive down to the line and let's have a look here it looks like Strasbourg on the slow motion replay will just get there and if it has two dollars ten and probably a dollar four for the place but Networks, he stuck like glue to the favourite, and there will be only an inch in it when the judge has a look at the finish links. By Quest for Fame Networks, trained by John Hawke, Strasbourg, of course, prepared by Bart Cummings, and he gets at Strasbourg, number one, the winner. Number two is second, Networks, Corey Brown. Number five is third, Grisham, Chris Munts. And officially fourth was number six, Hover. So it is one, two, five, and six. The winner by Yuma Tiller from Bella Regazza has now notched up the hat trick. And uh, I thought he, he may be the 57, was just starting to tell on him in the last little bit. Networks battled on well, and he's certainly a horse to follow. Second up from a lengthy spell. And Grisham battled on by Mars K. Gay Waterhouse, hover fourth. And off to the Australian Guineas. It's already been reported for the Bart Cummings trained. Three-year-old by Yu Matilla. And there he is, the Cups King, who was trackside or courtside at the Australian Open Tennis. Now, Victoria Parks and... Stalls. First on the card, 4-5-6. Good win by Gussie Godiva. They slowed the pace right down mid-race, and she's come from fifth the fence. Held up slightly at the turn. It was an excellent win. Here's Kapuna coming in now, unbeaten in two runs at the track. Sweated up on the way to the stalls. First up here, can produce a run fresh. There's the expat going in, the favourite. First start for Matthew Adelton has Greg Childs on board today. Call me Sid, last of the seven to link in. They set the run. Jean Jester just took a dive at the gates. Settles a bit better now. They're ready and racing. The expat jumping well on the outside with Call Me Sid. Mr. Selby showing a little pace early, and then Dan Zarani driving through near the inside. Then Ness and Krizov trying to hold the inside. Kapuna's got back towards the end of second last and Jerns Jester on the fence, but the expat led. Dan Zarani second, Call Me Sid the outside, and then St. Krizov fourth the inside. Just had to check over heels a little bit there as Dan Zarani dropped ground. Then Mr. Selby two lengths further back in the field as Jerns Jester inside Kapuna. Up towards the turn, the expat at the 600 led. Call Me Sid as second. On the rails, Dan Zarani from Mr. Selby showing plenty of pace. Then came St. Krizov and behind Behind these, Jerns, Jester and Kapuna. The expat led coming around the home turn. Call Me Sid as second. Moving up on the outside as Mr Selby at any old odds to challenge as they corner and St Krizov hooks away from the rails to make his run. Dan Zarani struggling. The expat joined by Call Me Sid, Mr Selby and St Krizov is wider out at the 200. Call Me Sid in the middle, led narrowly from Mr Selby running a heck of a race and then St Krizov the outside and Jerns, Jester. Call Me Sid in front. Jerns, Jester flies through the rail but Call Me Sid Call me Sid from Jerns Jester. Mr. Selby third, then St. Krizov Kapuna, the expat. Well, he spat the dummy out. He's run second last and Dan Zarani last. What an interesting race up and down, back and forward. The expat rolled 675 across the line. Reese McLeod winning in New Zealand. Number one is paying $2.40. That's Marufati. If you like a comparison, you're getting good overs across all tabs. Second elect in New Zealand is number 12, Shadow Fax Babe, and it's paying $6 in New Zealand. So big overs for it, and the third pick in New Zealand in their betting is the three. Eagle Farm due in eight minutes. There's the top eight where Glass Slipper remains the firm elect and Exile is the second pick. To New Zealand, here's the team from Trackside. A hat-trick could be in the offing. Yeah, winning form's good form, isn't it? In the two wins, 13 from 13. But Robbie Hannum will be probably looking to get a pretty handy position, I'd imagine, in the race. That'll be the real interest. Marufati drawn four. Rat Tappen would want to be there or thereabouts. And I'd imagine Dan Boss will be there or thereabouts. Expecting a big run from Dan Boss. I know Chris McNabb just with the one horse in today. 17s and 395s is nice value for a horse that is by Dane, Dane Hill and has the blinkers on today. And what we can say is a pretty informed rider in the form of Andrew Calder. Shadow Facts Babe, the mount of Opie Boss and Murray Baker trained Shadow Facts Babe. She's shown something already, $6.90 and $2.15. Just in a three start, she's shown some promise all right. She has drawn a little wide as well, but seems to be a type of Oxford filly who finds the line pretty strongly. And uh, her last couple have been on firm tracks, which we have at Trentham today. There's Danette with Dick and Chris Bothwell about to go forward. She's 12 and $3.20. 
raced in the Super Bonus Prelude at Ellerslie, placed behind Foxit. Pretty relaxed looking type. Marufity though by remove, Maruf at uh, 2.25 at a dollar and 30 cents. Some of the onlookers here at Trentham today. That's the 1,200 metre barrier. And the Ford Wakefield Challenge Stakes field all lining up the 13 of them. And that filly there will draw the outside gate of 13. Star K, that win at uh, Tauhir and Ekao and Maiden Company, very nice. Cleared out at one. The lead up was okay behind Rutland Lass. And the initial start, her first start was at Trentham, right here at Trentham, back at the beginning of, uh, of, this mu of last month, December, and wasn't too far away behind on her debut. So one to come forward, and they'll be set for the Ford Wakefield Challenge Stakes at Group 2, courtesy of Radio Pacific, the call from Tony Lee. So they're all in the gates now for the running of the uh, Ford Wakefield Challenge Stakes, ladies and gentlemen, $100,000 at Group 2. We are ready. Gates are back and they're off and running. Right, Tat just a touch slow near the inside. Who let the dogs out back a little as well? Uh, now beginning fast is Dan Boss, perfect syndicate onto the speed. And then we have a little wider out, popular pastime, Nightbeat also with these with Starkey, the inside of Magistra Delecta. Marufity is the next to Dan in the centre. And then we have uh, Danette back behind these runners then, Shadowfax Babe, who let the dogs out and a little distance to the local Rat Tad is last but Dan Boss is the leader in the Wakefield running to the 650 metres perfect syndicate and popular pastime share the pace with it right in behind these runners then is Star K as two magistrates elected to Dan is angling out across these runners and Marufides and behind them as they go for home and a little wider out then is Danette and Rutland Lass right down the outside Dan Boss in front with a great kick Dan Boss about two lengths in front now from uh, Marufity running on as two is Star K in the centre finding some and it is right down the outside Dan Boss Marufity's flying on the outside and the favourite candid to the lead Marufity the prize in the Wakefield oh second third and fourth very close I don't know we had Danette and Shadowfax babe flying home Dan Boss right with them on the inside and Star K nice and close as well then Magistrate Director who let the dogs out to Dan Rutt and less and then we had uh, perfect syndicate night beat with these and popular pastime and uh, a distance to rat tat off his game has been the last of them number number one marufity from the mark walker yard of matter matter ridden by lance o'sullivan collects the cash of the favorite too good that minor end of the issue those very tricky dan boss is on the inside outside is danette and shadow facts babe so the four, the twelve, and the thirteen are all vying for second and third. Did so he double? That was at Canterbury. Yeah, yeah, it was a good experience in that. Um, Three forty currently on the tote in New South Wales. A fraction under that in on track operations. A dollar eighty for the place. Only other horse uh, in the market in the ring is number four Ingress, and uh, she has met with significant support in the last couple of minutes. Ingress, Darwina, no harm done. Ronnie Stewart's quickly got Darwina under control. So that will put a dent in outward displays, quote. Ingress still not out on the uh, tote board. They're all there now. Racing this time, and uh, outward display got the best of the start. Commencing pretty well was Darwina, followed by Tutelage. And then eminently, a bit more than a length, the Nesnas on the inside. Moon Point followed closely by Jesterette. And prattled out very, very wide as January. And then, now, Nesnas is going to make a little ground through along the inside. Second last in the race is only glory. And uh, in the east is last. They race past the 750, and Darwina narrowly now from outward display. Tutelage on the inside of eminently then january jesterette followed by nesnas only glory moon point in the east last and of course ingress a late scratching 131 eastern daylight saving time it's darwina for little ronnie stewart leading the favorite outward display three quarters as they round the corner length and a half to eminently followed by tutelage and then nesnas january jesterette in the east gone up on the fence at only glory wider out outward display got past darwina eminently and tutelage getting right up on the inside tutelage is finishing quickly. Huey Bowman drives it to outward display to head it off. It's Tutelage in front of half outward display. Tutelage just the leader. Tutelage beat outward display at only glory. Followed by January eminently a moon point in the east. Jester at Darwin and Nesnas drop right out of it over the concluding stages. Ingress was taken out of the barrier at 131.
Number five, Tutelage, written by Huey Bowman for Jack Denham and Mr. John Thompson by Secret Savings. Hello there. Yes, Greg. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, we got it 131. And what actually happened? Was she kicked at the barrier? On vet advice. Okay, fine. Thank you. Yes, the uh, that's the chairman assistant of stewards advising uh, of Ingress, and um, he wasn't actually sure of the reason for the scratching. Anyway, let's get back to uh, the placings: five, three, twelve, and eleven. Five. Okay, so they're all confirmed. First for seven hundred and two dollars and forty cents. And Jack Denham, Hugh Bowman combine with the Secret Savings Philly to collect the cash. That's race number two. And the first four details you have. Super Tab details are coming through. And Uni Tab we still await. There's the Quinella Super Tab. Exactor is there. And Trifecta we now have. So Uni Tab will. We await a scales report to come through at Victoria Park on 9, 3, 5, and 1. And shortly the runners will be parading at Eagle Farm for the next race on the card. The babies are going around at Caulfield in this third race on the card. Uh, which way are we going to go here? Fortune Princess firms in. Let's head trackside to Greek. Virtually the only one they want on track two is the favourite Fortune Princess. It was good money for Tally Shell earlier through betting, but uh, the late rally has come for the favourite. Clearly the top pick. If you don't fancy her, you've certainly got great value. Look at the second favourite there on the tote. 850 for File Rapid. 860 sp So the youngsters are set to go. 1,000 metres, ready now, racing, Fortune Princess was one of the slowest to bounce out of the stall. She settles back at the end with Dunkirk and Noble Red. First to bounce out here is File Rapid on the inside with Dubai Dynasty. Driving through Tex Tycoon runs to the lead in the centre. And they were followed by Tally Shell fourth over on the outside. A link and a half Perez in on the inside of Spartacle. Two lengths further back at the 600 came Fortune Princess. She's about eight or nine from the leader. Four lengths away to Dunkirk and Noble Red. To the turn, Tex Tycoon took the lead three quarters clear. Far Rapid with the inside, Tally Shell's working home. Then Dubai Dynasty under pressure. Fortune Princess with a heck of a lot of work to do. They corner Tex Tycoon, the leader, from down the outside now is Tally Shell. Far Rapid battling away, then Spartacle and Fortune Princess. Perez in making ground. Tex Tycoon is still clear to Far Rapid. Tally Shell and then Perez in and Dubai Dynasty. Far Rapid lunging at Tex Tycoon. Far Rapid beats Tex Tycoon. Perez in getting up for third placing ahead of Tally Shell and Dubai Dynasty. Then Fortune Princess will the start mucked up her chances. Trailed in by Noble Red towards the end of the field back there in company with Spartacle who was one of the last over the line and Dunkirk. 0 .90, 13.90 the time. 7, 6 and 1 uh, confirmed. Far rapid. Brendan Fennick and John Hawkes taking the race out. Showed plenty of pace in uh, its most recent start but was gone early in the piece. Run before that was very strong behind fashion victim both of those at Randwick and uh, well the John Hawks magic of just switching states has paid off again fail rapid is by gilded time from Daisy Bates having a third outing scoring quite strongly she met in a little bit of trouble and had to hook over heels and then find the line again so it's been a solid effort seven the winner six second one third well the favorite fortune princess jumped poorly and she was off the bit thereafter she was battling to get into the race this one at home waiting to return to the track. Victory Vane, how's she doing? Yeah, she's...